This video is brought to you by NCIX.com. Great technology, selection, and service. Hey, hello everyone, I'm Dimitri with Hero Canucks, and I gotta admit that I'm a little late into this whole UHD or consumer 4K uh, game, primarily because content is still lagging behind to support these high resolutions. However, Netflix now started to stream in 4K, and our own shift towards 4K videos lets me admire the true nature of one-to-one -one pixel playback. So the TV that we've got here is a Samsung, this is a Series 8, model number UN55UH8700. This is a 55 inch class smart TV that's curved with native resolution of 3840 by 2160, so UHD, and technically not 4K, with 1080p 3D support. And this is exactly where high resolution is needed because online content is slowly starting to catch up to our UHD needs, but hook this up to an HTPC and put driving content in your own hands. But before getting into the HTPC side of things, let's do a physical tour. Now it's really impressive how far we've come with the growth of these units in size while making sure they still look gorgeous. The chrome metallic exterior shell adds a bit of elegance. The incredibly tiny bezels, the sides and the top are 11 millimeters in width. That's insane, Jack. That's thinner than my desktop monitor for serial. The white and just as gorgeous base support follows the concave nature of the panel with the aluminum and plastic build that extends all the way to the back and is super easy to attach, plus has built-in cable management hoop. Lastly, I was very happy to find no gigantic branding anywhere on the TV aside from the really small Samsung text at the bottom, right above the power LED that I must say is right in line with the whole gorgeous theme. The I.O. area in the back is plenty fruitful with three USB ports that can be used to run media off a USB stick, plugging in your peripherals, so keyboard and mouse, and also manually upgrade the firmware. Moving down, we have a One Connect port for optional Samsung One Connect box for UHD content, digital audio output for your speaker system, a total of four HDMI connections, and antenna in at the bottom. Further in, there's your component and AV in one, AV in two right beside it, an Ethernet port, although Wi Fi is built in, IR out for extending or expanding devices for the smart remote, a 3.5mm audio output, and finally the X Link used by TV specialist to get inside the TV for maintenance. Multiple vents at the back allow for cooling, and here you also notice the TV is wall mountable, thus the location of all the ports on the side. The power plug is on the left side with a joystick like control and on switch on the right. The speakers are at the bottom with excellent stereo projection for a small size room, movie and music playback proved satisfactory. The smart TV comes with a smart remote. This ergonomically pleasing and compact device has a mic for voice commands, capacitive recognition for mouse like navigation on screen that works wonderful, plus all the needed controls to interact with all the smart features of the TV. And now to address the elephant in the room, does the curve actually make sense? Here are my thoughts on why it does, and we'll touch up on why it doesn't in just a moment. So first, aesthetically, the curve adds that beautiful cosmetic element that for even larger TVs would look stellar. Second, the curve somewhat helps to smooth out reflections. The way light bounces out of a concave surface tends to stretch out the light. This is great for reflections of objects in the distance. However, put on a bright shirt, stay six feet away, and that could make for some hilarious looking but annoying distractions. Also, one test that I did is to see how the coating would uh, interact with bright sources of light, like an iPhone flashlight that created unbearable crosshair-like reflections, while doing the same test on my desktop monitor really smoothed out the harsh light. Third, for dead on center viewing, you get to experience just marginally more immersive display because of the way the sides stretch out for this bow tie effect. Individual viewing experience for this 55 inch form factor is outstanding, although at this size, the curve is really not necessary. And now onto why the curve might not make sense to you. Well, first the price, be prepared to pay the premium over the flat, non-curved variation of exact same model. Second, the viewing location is important, as off-center and angled viewing orientation squishes the image on the side closest to you, while the farthest corner curves to reveal the extra image. 
Overall, you get some distortion and this is especially visible with vertical lines on the screen. With regards to color, contrast and image quality, there are many configurable parameters to suit your needs along with dynamic contrast, UHD dimming and RGB flexibility to fine tune color accuracy. Wide balance can be calibrated in two or 10 sections on the screen. I found the contrast really striking and the colors to pop with decent panel uniformity without noticeable brightness or temperature variance throughout the panel. Also, there's about three ways to adjust the blacks alone. So you can really fine tune if you want the deepest blacks you can get. For some reason, the gaming mode was buried under general settings, but uh, that greatly reduces input lag. And I use the TV for shield gaming in console mode, so I can play some casual Android gaming and the 1080p image coming from the shield was upscaled without artifacts. Also with the recent announcement of the new Nvidia Shield Android console capable of driving UHD resolution, uh, so this would become an appropriate platform to accompany your 4K TV. I also hooked up my recently built HTPC inside this beautiful N-Case M1 chassis. Make sure to check out our review of it with a GTX 970 to power some fun titles at 4K. And you can see the amount of detail there is on screen that's absolutely incredible, trying to really looks gorgeous. Although the major deal breaker here was running the native resolution of 3840 by 2160 uh, is the 30 Hertz maximum on the smart TV. Watching content is fine because movies are running at 24 frames anyway, but this is not your multi-purpose UHD experience. I ended up running 1080p on the HTPC to get that fluid 60 hertz. And with that said, the experience from the smart TV itself was just all right. Entering the smart hub lets you play some extremely boring and limited games. The app selection is limited, but with YouTube, Netflix, Skype, Vivo, Twitter, and Facebook, you can get started plus many on-demand movie apps, uh, although none with 4K delivery. I really enjoyed the UHD YouTube experience. Browsing is still a little bit clumbersome unless you connect the keyboard, but the image is gorgeous and fluid. And also Netflix in 4K was pretty amazing. As long as your network supports it, this is media consumption done right. However, the lack of a 60Hz uh, at 3840 by 2160 really killed it for me as otherwise it's an outstanding panel to connect to your consoles as it would be upscaling that 1080p image. As long as game mode is enabled, input lag should not be a concern. Now, I was disappointed with the smart hub, sort of the laggy performance, the limited selection of apps. The remote is great, so you can navigate that easily, but also didn't find any inclusion of any 4K content to showcase the beauty of this resolution, aside from the UHD Zoo that looped a few pictures, which was, yeah. The speakers to me were impressive, although my living room is very tiny, uh, so the projection is fine. However, many users have expressed their discontent with weak audio projection for larger environments. And lastly, the curve, and is it worth it? Well, despite all the immersive marketing, I would have to say stick to a flat panel in this size. It'll save you some cash, and really the only advantage of the curve I found are distorted reflections of distant light sources. But let us know what you think of the curve and if you are rocking a similar setup or a 4K TV that you use with your HTPC and other consoles, perhaps share your setup and how you use this ability on a daily basis. So this has been my first uh, UHD or 4K TV experience. Uh, I'm really looking forward to trying out the curved desktop monitors, specifically 21 by nine to boost that productivity and gain the extra real estate for when I do my edits. So if you have any suggestions for a panel like that, leave them down in a comment below. But that concludes this uh, video. We hope you enjoyed. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more uh, similar content and we'll see you in the next one.